what's that like mentally when you know like your life's on the line on this certain mission like are you saying goodbye to people yeah you know it's it's i remember writing letters you know to my to my wife to my son who was still at home my daughter was you know inside mama's belly and you know i've wrote i've had letters written out just in case you know that were to happen i mean you wow. Welcome back to the show, guys. I'm your host, as always, Sean Kelly. We are here on the Digital Social Hour. I got former Navy SEAL with us today, Ray Cash Care. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, of course. Can't wait to dive into your story, man. Let's From what it. I've seen, you've done some incredible stuff. And it's just, I'm just hitting it. Uh, it's just starting. It's yeah. Just get, it's just getting getting warm, you know? Let's start off with the SEAL days, because I'm right. always fascinated by yeah. SEALs. What was that life like, and how long were you there? Uh, so I was a SEAL. Uh, I was in the Navy for just under 12 years. 12 years and change. I was a SEAL for about eight of them. Mm. Um, I was stationed over on the East Coast teams. Um, I, if I had to sum it up in one word, it's just humbling. Uh, it's an amazing experience. Uh, no matter how good you think you are, I'll tell you what, it is, uh, you get humbled quick, right? Yeah. I mean, you're with the best of the best, um, but I wouldn't change it for anything. I've, you know, I've done a lot of things that I'm proud of, some things that, you know, you have to you have to understand that you're doing them for a greater good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes we have to go do things that uh, some people have a hard time stomaching, but you know, it's for the freedoms of this country, and uh, right. I don't regret any of it. Yeah, and, uh, I'd do it again, but it's a hell of a good time. Nice. Is it true Navy SEALs can refuse missions? I, not that I heard. I don't know. Um, I, I, I've heard stories that there have been people that have refused to go on an op before. But there have been penalties because of that. I don't right. think it's like, yeah, I don't want to go today. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not feeling good. But no, I, I've heard stories. I don't know if it's true or not. But I'll tell you, the men that I've served with, not a damn one of them would ever turn down a mission. I mean, even you know, I've gone on some things where you, there's good shot you're not going to come home. That's why you f lined up. Wow. Yeah. So what's that like mentally when you know like your life's on the line on this certain mission? Like, are you saying goodbye to people? Yeah. You know, it's it's. I remember writing letters, you know, to my, to my wife, to my son who was still at home, uh, to my daughter who there's been times when I was in like Fallujah where my daughter was, you know, inside mama's belly. And, you know, I've wrote, I've had letters written out just in case, you know, that were to happen. I mean, wow. you know, so it's definitely, a, it's, it's a mind, it's a mind exercise that you've got to condition your condition it to. Um, but you know, but here's the thing that I tell people, you know, every damn day you get in a car, you don't know if that's going to be the last day you get in a car. You just have to, you got to have that mindset that, you know, I'm properly trained, I'm educated, I'm with the right people, I have the right support element, and we're going to get this shit done. And mm. that's what I do. I just, and that's what I do now. I just took what I learned on the battlefield and I use it on the business field and the home field of my life. It's, you know, whether you want to be the SEAL team or the success team, that's, that's what it's about, you know? I was just talking to Mr. Mr. Grover about this. Yeah. Tim Grover, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, man. Use what you use the skill sets that you have, and apply it to, you know, the that you don't know, and see what see what transcends over. Transcends mm. over. What were some of those skill sets you learned there that you were able to translate over? Well, I think number one is the mental fortitude. I mean, you know, outgunned, overmanned, mm. outpowered. You know, overpowered. I mean, it's. I like I like the odds stacked against me. I mean, I think that's. That's entrepreneur 101, you know, mm -hmm. like how many people start businesses and don't make it, you know? I mean, it's, it's almost like a suicide mission if you think about it, right? I mean, yeah. it's, t I mean, I go extreme with everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the physical, mental, and emotional is, is where I pride myself at, you know? I mean, you know, I'm getting ready to hit 52. I'm in pretty damn good shape, but you know, it's, it's the mental and emotional. We're yeah. staying, staying calm in the rough seas. Um, and I'll tell you, man, um, you know, Bedros was one of my first, Bedros Koulian was one of my first mentors. Mm -hmm. And I will, I will never forget, you know, I was shadowing him with business. And I said, this is, how do you do it? He goes, what do you mean? He goes, you go in and you kick doors and you take down bad guys. I'm like, but I know who the enemy is. Mm. You know, when we're going up against something and you have people that are shaking your hands and you know that they, they don't want you to succeed, I'm like, how do you figure it out? He goes, it's just like anything else. It just takes time. Mm. You know, and that's... That's one of the main things I've learned in business, man. Like, as I've, I'm, you know, 
Number one, thank you, Mr. Grover, again. I'm, I'm obsessed with being successful. We were talking numbers before I told you what my next number is going to be. Yeah. Um, it's not your number, but hey, it's my number, and I'm going to keep, uh, keep climbing, but I won't stop. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing will stop me, and that's what I learned. I mean, it stems all the way back from my childhood, just having a childhood, I think. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I've learned from every successful person I know is there's been the common, the common denominator has been some form of pain, mm -hmm. physical, mental, or emotional pain. That's it. Yeah. Speaking of childhood, I know you mentioned you had a lot of anger growing up. Yeah, lots. And did you figure out how to sort of channel that for the better over, over the long run? Yeah, that's kind of my superpower. I've learned how to ha tap into the, the rage and the anger and the hatred and use it for good. You know, like and people go, that makes no sense. And, <laughs> and for the audience listening, what I do is I have like this mental and emotional strainer. Like think about like when you put spaghetti in a strainer and yeah. you, I strain out kind of all the good and I just have a pile of hate there. Mm -hmm. And, but I use it, I channel that energy and you know, people go, that doesn't make sense. People use fear. You, have you ever heard the stories of a car flipping over and a mother will pick a car up off of a human being? I've heard that. Yeah. There's these amazing stories. You can do the same thing with rage if you're willing to tap into it, the hatred, you know, and I don't want people to feel sorry for me. I tell everybody that I wouldn't be the man I am if I didn't go through the things that I did in my life. Mm. I mean, every successful person I know, no one has ever had it easy. Sean Whalen, I was t talking to him um, when he was in Italy a couple, uh, like a week ago. He was telling me some of his stuff. We have these commonalities of these, these pain thresholds that we break through mm. that make us, when, you know, when you're, when, when the hits the fan in business, I think to myself, is it really that bad? You know, um, for me, maybe I might lose 50, 100, a little bit more, but. I can always make that money back. I've been taught. I have the skill set to bounce back, to rebound. Right. So once I started applying that to my tactical mindset, man, I started, you know, getting the coaches, mm -hmm. right? The Dans, the Wesses, the Bedroses. And the only way that you're going to go is up, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's it. So you'd attribute a lot of your success to mentorship. Uh, if you don't have a business coach and you're a mentor or excuse me, and you're, and you want to be an entrepreneur, you're an idiot. Mm. You're an idiot. Like, because that's what I did wrong. I used to want to be like everybody else. And my mentors told me, don't, don't be me, be a better version of you and take pieces that you've learned from me. Mm. Like I'm going to pick your brain. You're half my age. I could come in here with an ego, but like, dude, Tell me, tell me what you did. Give me some pointers. Mm. I think the key to it, the key to being a great leader and entrepreneur is just humility, mm -hmm. being humble, right? That's it. Just, I don't know everything. There's shit I know that you don't know. And there's shit you know that I don't know. And let's, let's work, let's work together against yeah. versus against each other. We don't need to go to battle. Let's learn from each other. Maybe you'll take something home. And so will I. I love that. I just finished uh, Alex Ramosi's new book. And in, in the book, he was saying, if someone's doing better than you in business, you could always learn something from them, no matter who it is. But what does society do? They get jealous. They get yeah. envious. You know, I, my favorite is like when I'm coaching, people always go, why me? Why me? I'm like, why not you? <laughs> you are, you are, you are, if you're playing the victim. Yeah. You know, I could play the victim. It's going to get me nowhere. Yeah. It's not. What's your advice to people looking to get that first mentor? Well, what I would do is find someone that, you know, you take, normally what happens is you take a call, you, you know, with someone or their team and you just kind of tell them what your goals are. You know, I always do a short, middle, long-term goal and then tell them like, you know, obviously budget's a, a, a key, right? Because some of these mentorships are very expensive. Yeah. Um, and the big thing I asked is like, what's my ROI? Mm. You know, and I get free mentorship too. That, I'm kind of lucky, like Dan Fleshman, a few other people. Yeah. Um, but the ROI, like, what am I going to get out of it? You know, Wes Watson said, do what I say and you're going to make a lot of money. Mm. I like that. Straightforward. He just do what I say. And I did. Wes, Wes is a systems guy. Use his systems. You know, Bradley, they're systems guys. Mm -hmm. I call these guys all the time. They give me advice. Mm. I love it. And the reason why they pick up the phone is because they know I'm going to apply it. Mm. Right? And I told them, I'll pay you. And they're like, need your money. Hmm. They're doing great, but you know, but let me know how I can be of service of you. But what I did is obviously with me, when I first started little price was number one. Yeah. Um, and then for me, it was, I wanted to make sure that I, we were on the same frequency, right? Three frequencies, low, high, and ultra high. I want ultra high frequency mentors. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I do definitely do research on who you're, who you're interested in find, you know, 
with them is I don't want to know what it's like to make the money. Tell me about uh, five minutes. Tell me about the journey. Mm. Tell me the journey from the first million you made to where you're at now. And good mentor will be like, all right. And they'll tell you about it real quick. It ain't going to be easy. Are you ready to go to work? And I'm like, yes, sir. Here's my money. Let's go to work. Mm. But my responsibility is to show up and be ready to work, be ready to fight. And that's what I do. Right. I got tired of, I don't want to, you know, listen, and I want to make this very clear to everybody out there. If you're happy with your life at 60 to to $100,000, Great. I'm not that guy. I'm not either. I'm not that guy. <laughs> like I, my, the word I hate more than anything on our average, I will not be average. I despise the word. Yeah. I despise being average in anything. And I excel in everything and except the financials. So finally I was just like, no, no, I'm going to be extraordinary in that too. Now I'm a little behind the power curve, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't look back too often, but I know where I came from and I know where I'm going and I'm going up. Love That's that. it, man. Love that. I love what you said about average because I used to look up my body weight and compare it to people my height. And I'm like, wait, Americans are unhealthy. Why am I comparing myself to the average American? Yep. Why don't I just be fit and, you know, be myself? I compare myself to me. Yeah. Like, you know, like when, when, when I started coaching with Wes, I was like, you know, I want to get the roles. I want to get this. I want to get that. And, you know, like as soon as I, soon as I started bringing it in, first person I call is Wes. I'm like, look. I got the TRX. Look, I got mama the Audi. She wanted a new, the Q7. Look, I just ordered a Demon 170. He's like, is that what you want? I'm like, that's what I want. He's like, move on. Mm. Let's move on to something else. Yeah. Now I'm looking, I'm, you know, I'm talking to Bedros and Dan about uh, property, mm-hmm. right? And I just, but if you're, if you're new in the business, I will tell individuals this, man or woman, don't be scared to ask. Because I'll tell you this right now, a real mentor, like I have, I've seen people on the street and just say, excuse me, my name's Ray Cash Care. And they're like, yeah, I know who you are. I'm like, hey, listen, I, I don't want to bother you, but I would love to set up a five-minute call or talk to you. And 90% of them would go, what's your question? Mm. Like, but man, you better have that question. And you better know what it is and you better deliver. And like, boom, boom, boom. And every single person I've done this with, Travis Bott, all these guys, they, they, they will take the time because they see the passion, mm. right? Um, the one thing I don't agree with with certain uh, entrepreneurs is they're like, you you know, everybody's passion driven. You should be purpose driven. You can be both. Right. You can be both. I, I'm both. Like I do what I love. I'm, I sell guns. I love guns. I'm passionate <laughs> about it. I make great money on it. I love to speak. And I do the, the courses with Bedros and them. Yeah. And Dan, it's a win-win. I have both. Mm-hmm. Now I just need to learn how to monetize it even more. Yeah. And I'm doing that. You are, man. I don't know if you want to disclose your numbers, but you're obviously making a lot. Was it all like uphill from the start? Like once you left the SEAL life, what was that transition like? Okay, so true story. I got to give Bedros this. So I got to do the backstory so, you know, your listeners hear this. Um, I met Bedros at a speaking event, and I, like, opened and opened and opened before Bedros went on. But we had this connection, and it was the pain. And next thing you know, I'm doing stuntman, which is you uh, snort the salt, drink the tequila, rub the lemon in your eye. And then Bedros just said he loved how I people would re- resonate with me, right, relate to my story. And I'm very passionate, and I'm – loud. You've seen what I do. Mm -hmm. He goes, I want you to come and I want you to teach my company your skill sets and this mindset that you have. And I did it. And after that, he was like, I want to bring you on full time. And Mm -hmm. at the time, I mean, it was about a $200,000 job. I was making decent money, but that's more than I was. But it's not the money. It's who who you're making the money with, right? Right. Bedros and Dan don't lose, right? Wes doesn't lose. Tim, The people that I hang out, they don't lose. So I was like, I'll take it. But I was so damn scared. I was so damn scared to transition from the battlefield to the business field. I literally almost told him, no, you don't tell Bedros Cooley, no. But I was like, he's like, I need an answer. And I'm like, well, well. And he, he finally told me the story of um, the, cowardly, the cowardly line, how it was raised by sheep. And when it, when it looked in, you know, it acted like a sheep until it looked in the water and it saw itself. And it still thought it was a sheep until the father, who he lost when he was young, when they went hunting, came and bit him in the and when he roared, he realized that he was a lion, but he still had the sheepish mindset and said, you may be my father, but I will protect my flock. Mm. Bedros told me, you look like a lion, and you're a lion overseas, but you're a sheep when it comes to business. Mm. And it hurt. And Bedros is a big man. And I mean, I almost went to blows with him. He goes, you don't want to go to blows with me. You want to go to blows with yourself because you're angry. He was so right. You know, because I, I was, I don't want, I was so f- scared mm. to take the leave. I'm a father, right? I have, I have two kids. Yeah. I have a wife. My wife's a stay-at-home mom. She's got the toughest job in the world. Um, I was scared. 
And I told him, he asked me, it was like that moment in Rocky, th what, what, what's the problem? I'm scared. I told him, I'm scared. He said, trust me. Do you trust me? And I said, I don't even trust myself. Wow. He goes, well, let's work on that. And we did. Three years, we worked together. We still do stuff now. And it's just, it was time for me to expand. And, and the numbers, you know, I'll tell you, man, I, uh, you know, I make, I make a couple hundred Gs with my, my solid job right now. And I'm averaging, you know, I was just telling this, I hit Wes up with my first $30,000 a month. 50, 70, um, my first six, six figure month. Mm -hmm. And Wes is like, don't call me again until you have 250. And I'm working at that on top of my job. So wow. if you put in the work, right, there's a process, have your systems. You know this as well as anybody. I mean, yeah. I'm, you know, you're just like, I know this. <laughs> it works, but you have to be obsessed. Mm -hmm. And I'm obsessed with it. Like, you know, you're talking to the guy that sold a package last year for Dan and Bedros on Christmas. Mm. I work 365 days out of the year. Dang. You have to. No vacations? And when I take vacations, I do the same thing that some of the mentors do. Get up early. I section out that time. I spend time with my family. And they're like, listen, you can sleep. You can sleep when you die. I'll work at night, but I get it done. Wow. Versus before, I'd be like, oh, I'll put it on hold. Certain things you can, certain things you can't. Yeah. Right? But I still have balance with my family life. Nice. That's good to hear. A lot, of my, uh, a lot of men hide their emotions. I've seen you talk about this on your social media. Do you think more men should kind of embrace vulnerability? I do. I actually say this over and over and over. Vulnerability, when a man can understand and accept that he's vulnerable, it's actually a sign of strength. Hmm. And a lot of people go, no, it's not. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to be crying over every <laughs> sad movie, but being vulnerable means that you're in tune with yourself. And especially if you have a spouse or you have kids, I want my daughter to see a man that's a gentleman that is a savage servant, right? Mm. I'll, I open the car door for her. I do this for her, but then I'll be silly with her. You know, I had a social media post that went up years ago when my daughter dressed me up when she was little, mm -hmm. put me in mommy's dress and painted my nails. And somebody was like, I can't believe you do that. Mm. I was like, I can't believe you don't do that. Mm. You know, we fast forward to 13, my daughter's 13, you know, it's, it's the same process. It doesn't matter what it is, but my mindset with the kids is I hold my daughter's hand. If you ever have a child, boy, hold it as long as you can. How many, that's, that's my entrepreneurship advice to you. Yeah. Hold it as long as you can. And I'll never forget, she wasn't embarrassed. She goes to private school. She says, Daddy, I got to ask you a question. I said, yeah, baby. She goes, my friends ask me. She goes, they're not making fun of me, but they ask me, why do you still hold your daddy's hand? And without me saying a word, I just said, you know what? Do me a favor, baby. Ask them why their daddy doesn't hold their hand. Mm. She's 15. She doesn't hold it as much, but she'll still do it now and then. So, you know, and that's what I do, man. I, just, I hold on to everything I got. Wow. That's, that's the mindset. And being vulnerable is doing that. Like, I'm, I, I tell people, I'm a vulnerable mm. man. I'm sensitive as mm. I could, But I'm in, t I'm in touch with myself. But I can flip that switch, and I can get in that mode for whatever it is. Right. But you've got to find. I don't believe in finding balance. I believe in creating balance, right? Love that. So many people are about the addition. It's about the subtraction. I, I add positivity and, you know, success to my equation, and I get rid of all the negative people, places, and things. Mm. That's, that's my key. Man, that's powerful. And I've also seen you talk about this on one of your clips. A lot of people complain and make excuses, right? It's like we're, we witnessed it growing up as kids, like our parents doing it. I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but it's just a common thing. So how did you train your mindset to stop doing that? Well, I think people that make excuses live under the, menta uh, the victim mentality, right? It's, it's eventually going to, you know, I'm eventually going to die. I'm eventually going to do this. I just trained myself to just, I just try to, I, I always talk about flipping the switch. It's something that we all talk about. I try to do the opposite of what everybody else does. Like case in point, let's use the gym. Mm -hmm. People hate burpees and they hate pull-ups. Well, I'm going to do a burpee pull-up. I'm going to combine <laughs> But the thing is, is I get stronger. Right. Yeah. Um, I just try to, I program myself to do things that nobody else wants to do. Mm. And there's gotta be a reason why they don't want to do them. And it's simple it's because it's hard. And when people ask me, what is the key to success? It's just two words, work harder. You're cause we're, we're not working hard enough. Mm. I, I, I don't work hard enough. I mean, no matter how hard I work, I have these mentors that are doing it bigger, better, faster, and stronger than me. Now, I can have a real alpha mindset, which is, man, I'm coming for you. Or I can be a beta and be a little and say, well, that's, that's never going to happen to me. Mm. Well, how am I good? How are you going to know 
if you don't actually apply it. That's right. the thing, right? Apply. Yeah. I, I just, I, I have a clothing line, PTFO, put the fuck out. Do more, be more. That's, that is the key to success. Mm -hmm. And society doesn't want to put in the work, right? Yeah. You see kids that want to, they want to be professional basketball players. They want to be professional this. Well, you know, people, you know how many shots these people are taking or how many, they don't want to hear that. Mm. They're, they're looking for the clip course, right? They're looking for the, the short version. There yeah. are no shortcuts. I honestly don't think there are shortcuts to success. Someone said, what if you win the lottery? That's called luck. Mm. That's called luck. That's all it is. And they're going to lose it anyway. And they're going to, you know what? If you, I agree. If, if you do that, usually you see it with these, these uh, pro athletes. They get the money fast. What do they do? They lose it fast. Yeah. Very few select are smart enough to get the mentors, get the systems in play where they're investing and doing this. Very few. Yeah. Do you think part of that is due to the instant gratification of social media? Like, do you worry about the younger generations growing up in that environment? Yes. Yes, I worry Yes, I, I don't know. I don't know what the hell is going to happen in the next 20 years. Mm. I mean, you, like I said, I'm twice your age, and I will tell you this right now. Um, society is weaker than it was when I was young. I'm not saying you're a weak man. I'm just saying but people don't do as much because it's so easy to do nothing. <laughs> you Literally, think about it. You can, like, when I was a kid, we didn't have phones. Yeah. You got on your bike, and you pedaled to go do something. I caught the tail end of that. Yeah, now... I could just sit on my phone. I can order. F I don't have to leave my house. Mm -hmm. I can work from my phone. I can do everything from my phone. First thing I do with my clients is, is put down that damn phone and get out and start moving. But I'm making six figures. You might be making six figures, but you have a poor man's mentality. Mm. You've got to, you, the power of doing, the art of doing, people need to just do more. And I really think that it all falls under the discipline. I, my life is about discipline. And the rawest form of discipline that a man or woman can have is fitness. Mm. You look fit to me. It shows me you're disciplined. It does. When I see someone that is completely out, overweight and out of shape, now if they're at the gym every day busting their ass, I got no problem with it. There's some social media guy, I can't remember his name, he's like 400 pounds, a little some <laughs> in the gym every day, and I, I, he motivates me. Mm. What doesn't motivate me is the guy that's sitting, sitting on his <laughs> at home why he's 400 pounds. Yeah. I know why you're 400 pounds because you haven't got off your and put in the work. Yeah. And the reason why I wasn't making the money that I see coming now is because I wasn't putting in the work. Too many people wait. And that's what this younger generation is doing. They're waiting. They're waiting for handouts. And I'm going to tell the younger generation this if you listen. The handouts, I know a lot of going on. I don't get into politics and all that. But eventually, all good things end. So the way that you fix that is you believe in yourself, you bet on yourself, and you start investing in yourself. And when you do that, you will see the ROI or return on investment. Um, I'm sure everybody here knows that term, um, but that's what it's about, mm -hmm. right? Prioritize, monetize, strategize. That's all I do. I love that, especially handouts. I mean, I'm a numbers guy. You look at the numbers of kids that come from successful families versus people that experience trauma like you talked yep. about earlier. And most successful entrepreneurs come from people that had trauma. Nothing. Some of the most powerful men I know come from humble beginnings or horrible beginnings. That's yeah. it. And that's why I can relate to these guys so much because, you know, I'm not telling a boohoo story. I mean, a lot of bad shit happened to me. Um, and I could be a victim and say, oh, you know, this happened to me and this is, but I was like, no. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that, that story of um, the father who's a heroin addict and he had the two twin sons. And he asked the one son, why are you a heroin addict? Because my father is. And they asked mm -hmm. the other son, why are you a multimillionaire? Because my father and, and brother are heroin acts and I want to make sure they get better. Wow. Who are you going to be, right? So that's what I did. I do, I do a lot of self-reflection. I look in the mirror and I grade myself. And, you know, the, the, the fitness was pretty good. Um, the family was pretty good. That can always be better. Mm -hmm. um, and the faith, believing in myself, was a little weak. But the finance, because I didn't believe in myself, I wasn't doing all the things I wanted to do. So of the family, fitness, finances, and faith, for me, the faith is believing myself. The journey cannot begin unless you believe in yourself. Mm. Like your first business that you had. You obviously believed in what you were doing Absolutely. because you were super f successful at it, right? Yeah. You didn't just go, oh, this is going to be a part-time thing. You probably put in the sweat equity. And, Dropped and, out of college, went all in. All in. That's the thing. All in. Tim, all in, right? Yeah. Being obsessed with being the best. Uh, that that's what it is and no i don't care what area of your life it is mm -hmm. you have to be that extreme with everything yeah. everything
Because if not, you're never going to amount to anything. Love that. How were you able to maintain the marriage when you were serving? Because you served for 10 years, right? I served for 12. Um, I met my wife on the way out of the SEAL teams going into the CIA. Okay. Um, and it's quality time when you're together, right? Um, like when I was in the agency, 60 days on, 60 days off. When I was had my 60 days off, I mean, me and mama were together, you know, mm. spending time together. Obviously, when you start putting kids in the equation, it gets, you know, it gets a little more complicated. But I try to spend, make the time that I have quality time, mm -hmm. you know, Spending time with your daughter, going for a walk on your phone, that's not quality time. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Dinner time, put the phone down, right? Turn the TV off or we put music on. Um, we just do certain things together. Like, I'm real big on the date night. Mm. Um, I do date night with my wife. Um, I try to get a, you know, it's not as often with my daughter, but at least every other week I try to do a daddy-daughter night. Nice. And then, you know, we try to at least once or twice a month go out as a family somewhere really nice. Yeah. You know, dress up, make them feel special. Um it's just the little things, though. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I like the date night stuff. Cause oh, it's key. You have to have it, right? Um, date. I'm going to tell you this right now. Date your fiance. Date your wife. Like, date her mm. for the rest of your life. Date her. Don't just marry her and it's over. Date her. Mm. Like, it's a, it, I, I court her. Flowers. The things that won her over, the things that you have to continue to do Yeah. versus getting stale. Now, you, as you both age you're going to, things are going to change, but you need to make sure that you're growing in the same direction. That's what happens with a lot of couples yeah. is they grow apart because they don't communicate enough, mm -hmm. right? Goals, dreams, dreams, aspirations. Like my wife can go to work and make a ton of money, but I was like, listen, if you want me to go all in, all in, I need you home taking care of my most prized possession, which is my mm. children. And if you do that, then I, I promise you, I'll get you this, this, and this. And she doesn't even care about the materialistic things, mm -hmm. but she just likes to see me grind. And I love, I love coming home and having that structure because mm. I'm big on structure. Yeah. Having that structured home. Um, you know, but before we had kids, man, she was, you know, she ran a bank. She was crushing it. Wow. And it's, you know, you have to conform and, and mold and to each other as you're growing. Like, yeah. we're not doing this. We're doing this. Growing right? together. We're growing together, man. We've been together 18 years, married, or we've been married 20, eight, um, married 18, sorry, together 20. Wow. And make sure I get that. <laughs> right. Sorry. Sorry, baby. Girls care about that stuff. They do, yeah. you know, and it's just the little things, you know, yeah. the little things are what count. I've seen you talk about the importance of uh, showing up on time. <laughs> How do you treat people that don't show up on time? Well, it's, it's automatically a strike, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I'll say it. I'll say it to you. I'll say it again. If you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. If you're late, you're <laughs> fired. Um, case in point, I, you know, I told you the story when I got here today. Got my suitcases here. I was going to take a chance to check into my hotel. I was like, no, 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 no. I don't want to take a chance. Mm. Because if I would have showed up late, my thing is, is I would have been sitting across from you wondering, what are you thinking about me? Mm. Like, you know, this guy's a Navy SEAL. Um, I think it's, listen, here's what you need to understand. Um, you're being evaluated since the day you're born to the day you die. And the one thing that we all know is we're going to die. We mm -hmm. don't know when, but we're going to die. So what I want to do is make sure that the internal dialogue that you've got going on, because we've constantly got internal dialogue is going on as well. Listen, this guy punctual. Mm -hmm. He showed up ready to get it done. Um, he's in, he's in shape and maybe he's a little bit insane, but it's in a good way. Mm -hmm. And that's the impact and the message that I want to leave on people. But when you show up late, I actually take it as a sign of disrespect. Same. You know, it's, it is like, Coming out here, man, I was, you're like, you want to come out? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Can't show up late. Can't show up tired. Can't show up drunk. Mm -hmm. Got to show up ready to go to war. Yeah. I don't know what questions you're going to ask me. I got to be on my A game. And I hit up a couple of our big entrepreneurs, and they're like, dude, don't show up, not ready to go to work. I'm like, <laughs> Dan, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. So that's why I'm here, man. Love it. Yeah, you got to but you got to be like that with everything. You know, it can't just be, you can't be like that for one thing. Mm -hmm. Because what a lot of, you know, now, listen, I want to make this very clear. Women are different, right? I could tell my wife at 10 o'clock in the morning, be ready by 4, 3.55, she's running around <laughs> at me because she doesn't know where something is. That's different. Yeah. And, I, and we have our roles, but I'm speaking for, for who I am and my family. My role is I make sure that I'm always early, that everything is ready. I, my job is to prep and be prep. And I think that's what help, is helping me in business, right? Yeah. Um, my first, my meeting with Bedros. Showed up three hours early. Wow. He's like, are we supposed to get a workout in? I was like, well, we can. And then after that, he's like, well, let's go get some lunch. I was like, no, let's just go upstairs and do our interview right now. He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I don't, we don't need to go out and have a fancy lunch. 
we don't need, and he already knew, you know, he wanted to offer me something and I want, I wanted to hear what it was. Let's mm. go upstairs, man to man and talk about it. It was a quick, it was a quick deal. Wow. And he liked that. And I was like, let me take you out to lunch, Dang. you know, but that's how you do it. You show up early, um, you over deliver, mm -hmm. right. And that's how you make an impact, man. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Love your messaging, man. Truly inspired by your story. Anything you want to close off with? Um, just believe in yourself. You know, if, if you've got, if there's something out there you want to do and you're really good at it, um, believe in yourself, put in the hard work, and I promise you, I'm living proof it will pay off. Absolutely. Thanks so much for coming on, Ray. Thank you, sir. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.